Usa. Right. We, we've been talking about data, a piece of data in a population. Right? And we know how to treat this data according to the population. But because we are lazy creatures, because we are lazy creatures, it would be nice if we could talk about population without actually looking at the whole population. Right? The, the problem is with populations, the populations are very large. So what we're going to look at is market that doesn't work. I'm going to look at sampling distribution. Sampling distributions. And what are sampling distributions? Are is the use of samples to estimate a population. That's the grand idea. The grand idea is to look at a sample and talk about the population. But to do this effectively, we need to learn about how to treat those samples, how big the samples are, what tools do we have to use the data collected from a sample to talk about population. And we're going to start this with a very simple exercise. How many samples of size small n? are possible out of a population of size capital N. Right, if we want to talk about samples estimating population, so let's, let's talk about how many samples are there to be taken. If you have a large bag of marbles and you want to pick, say, a handful of marbles, how many ways can that handful be arranged? How many combinations of that? Right? And so what we are looking at is that. is capital N C N out of the population, take a combination of samples, size, small. OK. Say population is size 19, and we want to take a sample size 5. How many of those samples can we take? Or you can plug it into your calculator. Right. I'm going to help you guys out and say this is 11,000, 11,500. That's a lot of samples we can take from a population. Right? It's a lot of samples, which means, which means that you know, if we pick one, and we want to say that this one talks about the population, right? Well, there is some wiggle room of getting the right one. And right one is you know, big quotation marks. What happens if we take a look at slightly bigger population? How many more samples are we talking about? What happens if their population is size 28? Yeah. That's a lot of samples. So when we are talking about a sampling distribution, right, we're starting to talk about big things. How big? Well, let's take a look. So a sampling distribution. Subdivision of, of what? When we talk about samples, we talk about parameters, or are we talking about statistics? 
Chapter 1. First page, if I recall. If when we talk about something, uh, when we talk about samples, are we talking about statistics or parameters? Statistics. statistics. So this is a sampling of a statistic. Can anybody give me an example of a statistic? Okay, proportion. Anything else? How about a mean? Would mean be a statistic? Mm -hmm. right. Mean. Variance? Sure. How about standard deviation? And so on and so forth. Right. So most of the things that we've been covering so far, we can plug in to this. So we can say about sampling distribution of sample means, right, or sample proportions. Okay. So what is a sampling distribution? A sampling distribution, well, to, to talk about sampling distribution, let's assume we can take all the possible samples of size n. It's a mental exercise, right? We, are, we will ev never ever actually write out all 98,000 samples. That, that, that's not that. So let's assume we take all the possible take all the possible samples of size n. Well, we know how many there are. There are n c n of those samples. We take all of them. And, and what? Well, we're talking about distribution, sampling distribution of a statistic. So, and we're going to have to figure out that statistic. So, we're going to find the required statistic. So we're going to take the required statistics for each sample. So far, so good. We took a lot of them, and then for each one of them, we calculate the proportion, mean, and variance, or standard deviation, whatever we were looking at. And now, if we arrange all of those statistics. So if we arrange all of those statistics that we just collected for each sample, we arrange all those of, from each sample into a table, a graph, a chart, right, some way to present it, this is called the sampling distribution. So we take all the statistics, for each statistics we find, sorry, for, we take all the samples, for each sample we find the statistics required, and then we put them together in a table. And that's a sampling distribution. Okay. Shall we do an example?
Example. Let's imagine a world where you have only three numbers. A1, A2, and a 5. Can we imagine that we have only three numbers to deal with? That's it. No other numbers. So if you have a word, and I'm going to ask you, what is the population proportion of odd numbers, what is the answer? Two out of three, right? So we know that population proportion is two out of three. So you're very comfortable with this. This, this idea that we only have three numbers and two of them are odd. Okay. We had a hard time figuring if y is a vowel on the exam. And as far as I can tell, most of you don't believe y is a vowel, which hurts my feelings. Yeah, sometimes why? Sometimes why and sometimes why not? Okay. All right. So let's, let's build a sampling distribution of proportion, of the sam of sample proportion. So for that, we're going to have to look at samples. What kind of samples can I take? I have a world with made three, three numbers. I'm going to pick a random, random number, random number. Well, if I pick a random number, actually, no, no let's do it. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do samples size 2. We have three, world, three, three numbers. Let's pick up sample size 2. So I'm going to pick one, two numbers from this world. Well, what kind of numbers can I pick? Well, I could pick a 1. I could pick up a 1 again. Yes? It's like a big, big bag of blue balls. Yellow balls and green balls, I have to pick up two. Can I pick a yellow and then pick up a yellow again? It happens, right? I could pick up a one and a two, a one and a five, a two and a one, a two and a two, a two and a five, a five and a one, a five and a two, and a five and a five. Now, Quick observation of this list of samples brings you to the idea that for some reason I'm saying that the order matters. One and two and two and one are different, different samples. Even though I just specified uh, these combinations. Okay? The reason why I do this is to keep probabilities the same. It's a slight cheating. Just squint your eyes and let me, let me, let me get away with this. We'll get, we'll get to do it, how to, wh why and how it happens in a second. Okay. Well, we are talking about a sampling distribution of sample proportions. So what's the symbol for sample proportion? Well, P is for population proportion. What would, be, what would we use for sample proportion? So sample proportion... has a symbol that looks like this. It's a P with a carrot above it. And it's pronounced P hat. This is P hat. And please don't make the joke, especially on Columbus Day, that this is a TPP. Sorry? This is not a TPP. This is a P hat. So what are the sample proportions. What kind of proportions are we looking for? We are looking for odd numbers. 
So what's the proportion of the first one of odd numbers in it? Proportion two. Two out of? Proportion is out, out of something, right? So this is two out of two. So proportion is one, right? Two out of two, two divided by two, one, oh, one. one right? Second one, how many odd numbers are there? One, one out of two. Well, so 0 0.5, and so we go. Zero. Two and two. Zero. Zero. Uh, and I need to get my bearing straight so that it looks. He, 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 he. Okay. This is zero point five. This is one point zero. Zero point five. Zero. Zero point five. One. Zero point five. Now, what's the probability I'm going to pick one of those samples up? Yes. So when we're looking at probability of picking one of those samples, each one of those is 1 out of 9. The, our sample space, right, all the possible choices, there's 9 all possible choices. And this is the reason why. I differentiate between 1 and 2 and 2 and 1, because otherwise I will have to adjust the probabilities. That's 1 out of 9 all across the board. Heads up, I will never make you do this on an exam, ever. But the reason why we're doing this is so we understand the process of how we got there. Okay. How did we calculate a mean of a of a probability distribution? Wasn't it something like that? Right? We had this formula before. So in our case, following the same logic, instead of a value, right, this is a value times probability of that value. But now we are talking about samples among samples. So we're talking about the proportion of a sample times the probability that sample is going to get selected. Right? This was a value and a probability of that value, picking that value up. This is a sample proportion times the probability of that sample being picked out of all the samples we have put down. Yes? So we need one more column of p hat times probability of, of that. Right? So the proportion of that sample times the probability we can pick that sample. Also, we multiply this out. So this is 1 ninth, 1 eighteenth. 1 ninth, 1 eighteenth, a fat zero, 1 eighteenth, 1 ninth, 1 eighteenth, and 1 ninth. So if we sum that column up, right, the proportion of that sample times the probability of that sample happening, we sum this up, what do we get? Sorry? We're going to get six nines. If you add all of those together, one, two, three, four, five, six, six nines. But six nines is two thirds.
So what we just did was we said, hey, population proportion should be two thirds. Yes. And here I'm saying that the average of sample proportions of all the sample proportions is two thirds as well. So if we had one, two, five, and seven, it would be three fourths, because three out of the four are odd. Yes, and if we again did we this, yes, we would still get the average to be. Okay. All right. Should we do one more, like this? All right. Let's talk about me. Uh, let's talk about. Um, everybody has a coin. What? A coin. A coin. A ch spare change. I. Oh no! Keep keep it. No coins for you. Okay. Anybody have spare change? Because there are some people here that. No don't use pain fonts. And I don't carry change because gold coins. Gold coins, yes. By the way, if you're borrowing a coin, don't forget to give it back. I have a dime. That works. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, everybody has a coin? That's the coin. Who doesn't have? Because I, I, who has an extra coin? Okay, that's fine. Throw. That's okay. Here you go. Thank you. Have a coin as well. Everybody got a coin? Excellent. All right. So this is what we're going to do. Each one of you toss the coin. Each one of you toss the coin ten times and count the number of heads you're going to get. Give me the number of heads after you've tossed the coin ten times. <laughs> Need help? Head? Yes. Do this. No, do. Okay, I know. Try this. It's easier. <laughs> Try this. Just no. Do your. Put your finger like this. Yeah. No. This <laughs> thumb underneath this, and then flip the thumb up. Cool. That's one head. Nine more. Probability and statistic. I told you it's cards and coins. <laughs> okay. So I hear four out of ten. Who else got a seven? I, I hear a four, a seven, a five. Who else? I hear a six out of ten. One out of ten. <laughs> I'm not borrowing coins from you when we are going to be tossing things. Uh, what else? What'd you get? You got another four out of ten. Anything else? <laughs> Lost count? Yeah, that's okay. You got a seven? Okay. Anybody else? Do you want everybody? Yes. Yeah. Four out of ten. Yes. And anybody else? Four. Anybody else? Three out of ten. Three out of ten. Yes. Excited. Yes. That's it. One more. Three? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Who didn't toss their coin? All right. How many people got four out? Four out of ten. One, two, three. And I have one, two, three, four. Lying. Someone wow. is lying. Someone repeat. <laughs> fine, fine. Let's toss it again. Let's toss it again. I'm going to get. Just go round down the. Uh, let's no. Let's do another set of 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 Why ten.
You guys think it's silly. Uh, <laughs> it's getting recorded too. Anybody else? Oh, no. I got five. Anybody else? Oh, wait, you have one left in it. <laughs> Anybody? <Whoa. laughs> oh, this is, this is going to be too fun. <laughs> All right, anybody else who didn't? Well, one is throwing and yeah. what? How much? Four. Four. And let's wait for the last one. Six. Six. Okay. All right. Hey. Okay, so are we agreeing this is a set of random samples from a population of 10 throws? Yes? Okay. What are we expecting? No, what are we expecting to get? We throw the coin 10 times, what do we expect? What's the expected value? Five, right? We are expecting... Yes, we are expecting proportion of one half. Population proportion is one half. If I take all the flips, possible flips, right? So let's take a look at what we have. We have two, or we have a one, all right? I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to count them. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we have an eight? No. No, okay. We have one, 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 one. We have how many twos? Do we have any twos? We have one, two. We have one, two. How many threes? One, two, three, four, five. We have five threes. Fours. How many fours do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Five fours. How many fives? One, two. We have two fives. Sixes. One, two, three, four. Four. How many sevens? One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Everybody agrees? Mm -hmm. Value, frequency, right? So I'm going to graph this for you. Since you've been doing histograms for me, let me do a histogram for you. So I have a, a 1, a 1, a 5, a 5, a 2, a 4, and a 5. Right. A 1, a one, a five, a five, a two, a four, and a five. Yes? Okay. What does this look like? I mean, I, I understand that five wasn't very lucky, but if I were to put a line through this, yes, would we expect the line to look
perhaps like this. Right? You would expect more files. We didn't get more files. But would you expect something like this, right? What we have right now is something that looks like that. Right? That's, that's what we got. Yes? Right, right. Which means, where's the center of this data? If you had to take a wild guess, where's the mean of this data? Right in the middle, right? Right in the middle. What's in the middle? Right? So this sampling distribution says, hey, I take all the samples. Yes? I take all the samples. And instead of the values, I look at the samples. And I say, look at the probability of that happening. In our case, we're looking frequency, but we can combine frequency to get probability. Yeah. We look at this. And we say, hey, the average of, of those samples, right, the average of those samples comes out to be the population average. Right? The average of this comes out to be population average. Right? In our case, it's loose, heavier skewed to the bottom because somebody was luckily throwing only one head. Right? But this looks relatively symmetric. Assuming if we did another set of trials, somebody would probably throw eight heads. I'm just hoping. Right? Right? So the idea is that if we have samples, from those samples we can start talking about population. We can do it for proportion, but we can also do it for 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 means, sample means. So if we look at the same the same world, the same world where we have only three numbers, right? We only still have three numbers. We have still one and two and five. And we do the same thing. We got a sample size two. One, one. And we just look at the mean of this. What's the average? Average of 1 and 1 is 1 plus 1, 2, divided by 2, because we have two objects here. Right? That's 2 out of 2. So this is 2 out of 2. Right, we have a sample that has a, where we put a 1 and 2. What's the average of the sample? 1 plus 2 divided by 2. 2, because there's two objects in here. Right? So that's 3 out of 2. That's 6 out of 2. That's 3 out of 2. That's 4 out of 2. That's 7 out of 2. That's 6 out of 2. That's 7 out of 2. And that's 10 out of 2. No? Yes? Maybe? Not convinced. Okay. X bar means sample mean. So if I have a sample that has two ones in it, I'm asking what's the average of that sample. It's one plus one divided by two. If I have one and five in that sample, right? That's one plus five divided by two because there's two items. Good. Yes, maybe. Everybody's comfortable how I got those numbers. Okay, what's the probability of picking each one of those samples? Well, it's still 1 out of 9. So the probability of picking each one of those samples is still 1 out of 9, because there's 9 samples to choose from. The chance of picking any one of them at random is 1 out of 9. And just like before, just 
just like before. Before we had the sum of x times p of x for probability distribution. Now we are talking about a sampling distribution, which means that the mean is the sum of x bar times p of x bar. Right? Instead of talking about a data value, we're talking about the average of the sample we just picked. OK, so in our case, that's x bar times p of x bar. Right? That's the sample mean times the probability of getting the sample. Sample mean times probability of the sample. So we're getting 2 out of 18, 3 out of 18, 6 out of 18, 3 out of 18, 4 out of 18, 7 out of 18, 6 out of 18, 7 out of 18, and 10 out of 18. Again, this promise this is the last time we're doing this. Right. So what is the sum of all of this? Well, if we sum all of this, we get 48 out of 18. Forty-eight out of eighteen. Forty-eight out of eighteen, if simplified, is eight out of three. So what is this saying? Well, this is saying that the population mean is eight out of three, or eight divided by three, right? Eight thirds. Yes. Yes. So this is what it's saying. Well, let's look at, take a look at it. If, we, if our population was, so the population was a 1, a 2, and a 5, what's the mean of those three numbers? Five plus two, seven plus one, eight, and there's three numbers. OK? Now, we showed it that it works for proportion, and we showed it that it show, works for means. Are you really comfortable with how we got there? Now, again, I promise we won't, you won't have to do this again. It's important that this idea sinks in versus the ability to do this. So we have a couple of conclusions that follow this. And conclusion number one is that sample proportion targets or estimates population proportion. And same thing with sample mean targets or estimates population mean. Eight divided by three, how big is that number? If you had to take a wild guess. Two and two thirds, so 2.6, about. OK, well, I'm going to pick a random sample, this one. 7 over 2, that's 3 and a half, right? 3 and a half, and this is 2.6. It's not close, but it's not exactly far away. 4 over 2, that's 2, and we're expecting 2.6. Again, not very far off. It's not like we are getting. 1700 here and we are expecting 2.6 right so all those numbers are oscillating slightly higher or slightly lower than the population right same with your coin flips we were expecting five one person got five everybody else got 
six or four or seven or three, right? We, we're oscillating. How many people got one? One person got one, right? So we are not worried about that one. For one person got two, right? We are not worried about the extremes. We're going to be oscillating. So if I asked any of you to flip a coin 10 times, there's a pretty good chance that your score is going to be very close to what the population score would be. As in, I ask everybody to flip a coin and we're going to average the results. Right? So this is, this, is, this is important. This is part one. Part two. Um, part two. This works, so I'm going to put the third answer. This works for vari variance, but not for standard deviation. So a sample standard deviation doesn't approximate population standard deviation very well. We're going to cover this in a second. Why? So this is just a, a little... Because standard deviation is a statistic. So we have a sampling distribution of sample standard deviation that won't approximate population standard deviation very well. And why? We're going to cover in a second. Next thing. And we have two little sideboards. The bigger the samples we take, the better they are at uh, estimating the population. And the more samples we take, the better it is. Example, example. I asked all of you to flip the coin 10 times twice. If I took, averaged all of that, I would get close to 0.5. Right? So the more samples I take and I average them out, the closer I'm to the population. But also if I asked you all of you to flip the coin a hundred times versus ten times, right? Each one of those samples would get closer to 0.5. So the bigger the sample and the more samples you have, the closer you get to the population parameter. Okay. But now we are talking about big. What's a big sample? Bigger sample, right? Well, we need to have some way to to quantify that. The more, yeah. No, no, that's, that's okay. Uh, my handwriting is atrocious. The more samples, the better, right? The more samples you take, the better. We had somebody here that flipped one head out of 10 flips, right? By themselves, that sample is not very good at showing that we, get, we should be getting 5. We're expecting 5 out of 10. But if I average all of you together, I'll get very close to 5 heads out of 10 flips. Right? Same thing if I asked you to flip the coin 100 times. We would get more closer to 50 heads and then farther away. So the question is, what, what does it mean bigger? When, we, when I talk about bigger, I'm referring to the central limit theorem. Okay. Central limit theorem. For this part of the, the, the discussion, I'm going to put a requirement down. The requirement is that a population has a mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Right? 
we will talk about what big enough samples when it comes to proportion means in a second. Let's talk about means and standard deviation. So that's, that's the requirement. Um, let's look at case number one. Case number one, we take a big sample. What's a big sample? Well, in this class's case, it's a sample that is bigger than 30. Not 30, bigger than 30. And here's a little caveat, and I want you to pay attention to this one. Depending on the source, your secondary source for this class, textbook, online lectures, handouts, whatever, that number changes. It cha it's usually between 25 and 50. So some textbooks will say that bigger than 26 or bigger than 50. Some even go as high as saying bigger than 100. Depending on the textbook and depending on the professor and depending on the instructor and depending on egos, that number fluctuates. I think 30 is a pretty good place to start. But just mind you that you can open a textbook and there will be central limit theorem n bigger than 25. Same definition, just they assume that 25 points in a sample is big enough. I think bigger than 30 is the right way to do it. But right, it's a little, put a little asterisk just in case you see it. It's like, my textbook it says about 50 and oh my God. I'm like, no, just relax, you know, breathe. Keep calm and do, statist do statistics. Yeah. So this is, if this happens, the sampling distribution of what? Well, we are talking about means, so of sample means. And here's the big deal. The sampling distribution is normally distributed. Remember the coin flips we did? I do remember that. That looked like a normal distribution. It wasn't perfect, um, but it had that general shape. We're saying that if you take samples that are at least bigger than 30, at least 31 points big, we don't care how the population is distributed. That sample will come from a group of samples that is normally distributed. Right? At the very beginning of, of the class, we said how many samples are there? That many, right? So if I take all the samples, all the samples, and then all of the samples say have 35 members in it, right? Then all those samples are going to create a normal distribution. And why is that important? Because from normal, we can get to standard normal with the z-score, right? Which means that we have a set of tools we can already do something with it. We are not doing it with single units, we're doing it with groups, right? Here, Everybody looks at their exam score and says, hey, oh my God, I, by comparison to everybody else, my z-score is, you know, negative 1.5. I'm, you know, I'm almost unusually bad at this class, blah, 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 right? But this is in this class. ROTC, according to one of my friends, looks like this, that they, they take a little platoon and they compare the average of that platoon to the averages of all the other platoons. And I'm telling you that I don't care how the soldiers are good or bad at, say, marching. The moment I take 35 of them and put them in, in groups of 35, and I average that 35, those 35 people, 
all those platoons will be normally distributed, which means that I will be able to compare a platoon to the distribution of other platoons, right? A group of other groups. Now, we also realize that if we take the average of all the means, the average of the sample means, what did we get? We got the population mean. Remember our coin flip? Where is the center of mass in here, right? Right here. Right? The center of the data is somewhere there. Yes? When I mean, you have a normal distribution, it's right in the middle. The mean is right in the middle. So I'm saying that the average of sample means, right? The center of sample means is, is population mean. Which means that I suddenly can compare a sample to the whole population. I can compare a sample of individuals to a population of individuals. Right? I can compare a group to individuals. And that's powerful, because that means we don't have to worry about all the samples out there. Because we say, hey, I don't care what they're distributed. I know that if, they're, if my sample is big enough, I'm golden. I can use this, and I can do a direct comparison. Okay. Second thing we would like to be able to do, second thing we would like to be able to do, we would like to be able to talk about the standard deviation of those sample means. And this is a little tricky. And the reason why it's a little tricky is, what does standard deviation tell you about data? That was chapter one, I believe. It's a broader band of the data. Of well, the bigger the standard deviation, the wider the, yeah. the, the data is, right? So if we took the look at a, a set of individuals, how wide this is, right, would have something to do with standard deviation, right? The bigger standard deviation, the wider the band is in a normal distribution. Not standard normal, in a normal distribution, right? But now I'm taking a group of you. Let's look at the exam scores, right? Let's look at the exam scores. What are the chances are I'm going to pick the five higher scores out of the 50 people that take statistics with me? I'm going to pick the exactly the five higher scores. Very, very slim. Yes? Right. What are the chances I'm going to pick five lower scores, lowest scores, out of 50 people? Very slim. Right? There's a lot of combinations I can have of, of you know, 50C5. Right? There's a lot of combinations I can have. What are the chances I'm going to pick three people in the middle, one high, one low? Or four people in the middle, one high? Or four people in the middle and one low? Right? Or Two lows and two highs and one person in the middle, right? When we start looking at the, uh, well, all the possible combinations where the score of the group would be about average, we realize that, that our distribution starts looking like this, right? So this is for individual data. This is for the mean of samples. Right? It gets compressed. Have you ever seen somebody who is seven foot tall? Yes. Okay, let's make it easier. Have you ever seen somebody who is six four? Right here. Right here, right? Is there a town in the United States which has the average height of the population being six four? No. Probably not, right? And a town is definitely a sample bigger than 30. Would the town's heights be normally distributed? 
They would be, right? But they would not have one where all the tall people go, right? You know, we have a little exile in Alaska. Nobody talks to us, right? Doors are e high. There is no bottom two shelves. There's only top two shelves, right? But, but that would cause the, the, the variation of data to be much more narrow. Because most towns will have an average height that is very similar to the population average height. Right? Which means that this data will be much more narrow than this. So even though we would like to say, hey, the, me, the, the standard deviations of the means of the sample is smaller than the population. Because this one talks about Okay. This is population. This is the standard deviation of the means of samples from that population. So we cannot equate them perfectly. We have to say that, hey, this is more compressed. How much more? By square root of n. OK? All right. Case two. Does the mean of samples uh, implies that is the law of averages? Uh, yeah. Uh, saying that the average of a po population of the samples, it's the expected, the average of sample means, right? will behave like the population. But the probability of picking a sample which has an extreme is much more difficult than the pro pro probability of picking an individual that is extreme. Right? On this campus, the chances of picking somebody who is above six foot is not that high, but doable. For example, me. Right? The average of picking a, a classroom where the average height is six feet close to impossible, right? I'm sure there's a meeting of administrators who are tall or construction workers, or even, right? But this is what it's saying. This is, it also means that the, the, the data variation is less because it's much more compressed around the average of the population. Uh, case two. Case two of central limit theorem says, hey, I have data that is sampled with smaller samples, 30 or less. But, but, I know that the population is normally distributed. So I'm saying, hey, if we take a smaller sample and the population is normally distributed, then the, then the sampling distribution of sample means is normally distributed too. So if I'm picking from a normally distributed population, the samples will behave normally as well. So this applies. So the average of sample means is still population mean. And this applies, which means that standard deviation of sample means equals to population standard deviation divided by square root of the sample size. And there's case number three. Case number three is the following. We have a small sample. And no, nothing. 
and no nothing. No, no, no. And we don't know what happens to the population. We have some population. We take small samples from it. Can we make those assumptions? You can't do it. So if you have some population and we just take a small sample from it and we want to make sure that that sample reflects the population very well, you can't do it. Can't do it yet. We're going to figure out that later very soon. What do you mean can't do it? It's statistics. It's the master class. Right? So again, if we take a big sample, we don't care what the population looks like. The samples, right? The sample, the sampling distribution will behave normally. Which means that we can use methods like the z-score, which we're going to be introducing on Wednesday. If we have a small sample, but the population is normally distributed, the sampling distribution is normally distributed. So we take it from a normal, it looks normal. Compressed, a little bit compressed, but still behaves the same way. Right? If we take a small sample from a population we don't know anything about, then, then what? Well, then we're going to find out about it in a week or two or so. Okay? What I need you to understand from this class is two things. This is one. I would like you to have a vague understanding of this. And again, not calculationally and not give me an example, but have the inherent feel for what does it mean to take a sample from a population. That's one. Second one is that po samples are estimating population. Sample statistics are estimating population parameters. So a sample mean will reflect the population mean, right? And this is so on. And third, that flipping coins has educational purpose, besides gambling. Okay. And fourth, you can read this, this statement. The average of sample means equals population mean, or population average or population expected value. Be okay with this, this notation. And then we're going to do more of it, the Z-scores, introduction to Z-scores on Wednesday.